Hello friends, today we are here to continue our series of learning pharmacology of cardiovascular diseases and the topic of today is plasma volume expanders pharmacology. We'll deal with the pharmacology of plasma volume expanders but before studying the plasma volume expanders we should know what is the amount of plasma present in the blood. If we see the blood components these are divided into two major sections that is plasma and the blood cells. Plasma includes 55% of the blood content and 44% of it is given to the RBCs, that is the red blood cells, and about 1% composed of the platelets and the WBC. From this plasma, it consists about 91% of water and 78% of albumin and globulin proteins are present in the plasma, and other components include 2%. Plasma volume expanders are the agents which are actually given as a supplement to increase the volume of the circulatory system in cases of need when a person is suffering from any trauma, injury, shock, surgery, burns. At these situations, we can give them to increase the volume of a circulatory system and these are given intravenously as a fluid replacement. Plasma volume expanders, these are these high molecular weight substances and they exert osmotic pressure and remain in the body for longer time to increase the blood circulatory fluid. The first class of this category is colloids, which includes albumin, dextran, polyvalent, pyridone, gelatin polymers, hydroxyethyl starch in it. And the second category is crystalloids, which are the very commoner uh, agents which we are very familiar, that is the normal saline, dextrose and the Ringer's lactate. The basic mechanism of plasma expanders is when the plasma expander is prescribed in the interstitial fluids, when this enters in the uh, interstitial spaces, it causes increase in the amount of blood. They will raise the blood volume. And after raising the blood volume, two possibilities are there. It will increase some uh, factors in our body and it will decrease certain. First, we'll see the factors which are getting increased. That is the blood pressure, cardiac output, stroke volume, urinary output, and capillary perfusion. These parameters are increased when the plasma expanders are administered along with the increase in the blood volume. And the factors which will decrease, they are heart rate, per peripheral resistance, and blood viscosity. This is a diagrammatic representation of how these uh, colloids and crystalloids will act in a body when uh, given intravenously. The ringel lactate and the uh, uh, normal saline, these solutions, they directly enter in the interstitial fluid and from there certain amount it enters into the plasma, while the maximum amount remains in the interstitial fluid. And the dextrose, it maximum amount remains in the intracellular, medial amount it re remains in the interstitial fluid and very less amount goes to the plasma. But we can see over here that the colloid, colloidal drugs, they directly 100% of them they enter into the plasma. They don't remain in the interstitial uh, or intracellular areas. They completely goes into the plasma. So this is the drug of choice when the, we uh, seriously, you know, there is a need to increase the plasma, like in the circulatory shock. We are ought to increase the uh, plasma volume. So at that time, colloids are preferred over the uh, saline or dextrose solutions. So these uh, we can see. Uh, collide, uh, the distribution of how they enter into the uh, blood on administration. Then the requirements of an ideal uh, plasma volume expander, it includes like uh, we can see that uh, the oncotic pressure this is comparable to the plasma and uh, remain in the circulation for an adequate period. This is very much important because there should not be, uh, as it is given intravenously, which it should not take place that we have to uh, administer them again and again. It should remain in the blood for a longer duration of time and increase the amount of the plasma for a longer duration of time. And uh, they can be disposed by either by metabolic degradation or by excretion. There should be no antigenic or pyrogenic reactions taking place when you are giving a plasma expander. And they should not also interfere with the blood groups and cross-matching of the blood because it will again cause restrictions. Then, then we have to match them with the blood group or the RH factors. So all these things we have to, uh, all these things are the requirement for an ideal plasma expander. And these are used for in cases of hypovolemic shock, burns, severe trauma, or endotoxin shock.
they are contraindicated in severe anemia cardiac failure pulmonary edema in this situations and the renal insufficiency too these uh, plasma volume expanders are contraindicated we'll begin with human serum albumin human serum albumin is a purified human protein and it is it is actually get uh, gotten from the plasma 90% of it remains intravascular after about 2 hours of administration after about 2 hours of administration 90% of, of it still remains in the intravascular fluids and it contributes 80% of the oncotic pressure of blood and acts as a carrier for various essential compounds in the body. It is effective in restoring serum and interstitial albumin. So this uh, is a good drug of uh, uh, choice for giving uh, plasma as a plasma volume expander. And it increases, maintains the serum albumin concentration too, which also helps as a good carrier for many protein binding drugs also. Then dextran. Dextran, as you can see in this diagrammatic representation, it is obtained from sugar beet when it is fermented in presence of leuconostock mesenterides uh, agents. These are the microbes. These leuconostock mesenterides microbes, they uh, undergo degradation of the sugar beet, uh, fermentation of the sugar beet to produce dextran. This dextran, it produced uh, on acid hydrolysis, get divided, uh, get uh, uh, produce uh, and uh, separate the molecules of glucose in two molecular weights that is the 40 and 70. Uh, so these are found in two types that is the dextran 40 and the dextran 70. And this dextran 70 is preferred over 40 uh, due to its larger size of particle and a greater water holding capacity of the blood. It lasts uh, between four to nine hours in the body, but uh, the problem is uh, with the dextran 40 that uh, cases of anaphylactic reactions and renal failure have been reported. So this is uh, uh, means uh, we have to be very cautious if you're using dextran, but it is obtained from a plant source and uh, easily obtainable uh, by fermentation process. Then the next uh, drug is gelatin. Gelatin is obtained from animal source. It can be found from bone, skin, and sinew. Sinew, I must mention over here about sinew is that it is the uh, portion like the tendons and the ligaments which join the muscles with the bone. So this area is bone, skin, and sinew. They are capable of producing gelatin on um, chemical modifications and partial hydrolysis. And this animal collagen uh, is obtained specially from the cattle as a uh, use in the medicinal uh, age, use as in the medicinal purposes but uh, there is a risk of infection there is a risk of allergenic reaction in cases of gelatin as these are obtained from animal sources there is a risk of even cross-linking substances like urea succinic acid and hydride succinic coenzyme so uh, uh, we have to be very much uh, we have to use different cross-linking substances when we have to prescribe this gelatin and uh, these are hypo-oncotic in nature and uh, they have a tendency to give volume effect of about 70 percent and a rapid renal elimination is found but as they are from animal collagen source there is a risk of uh, reactions and infections Next is a synthetic uh, agent that is polyvinyl pyridone. It is completely synthetic uh, plasma volume expander and it is a, a sterile solution given in buffered uh, physiological saline, but it has a tendency to bind with insulin and penicillin. Hydroxyethyl starch, which is also termed to be as heta starch, which is one of the very leading uh, plasma volume expand, expander these days. Uh, it is synthesized from amylopectin and it is uh, it lasts in the circulation for about 36 hours it stay in the bodies for longer duration and uh, the dose uh, when you are giving a heta starch it remains for uh, so much time in the body so it fulfills the purpose for a longer duration of time but its rapid uh, uh, administration can cause histamine release and vomiting so it has to be given in the bolus form very slowly it has to be released but in some cases it can also cause renal dysfunction so only this has to be considered, but if you given slowly and steadily, if it is uh, given in the body, it lasts for a longer duration and it is a good choice of drug. Crystalloids. Crystalloids, we can uh, study them in a comparative basis. Isotonic fluids, hypotonic fluids, and the hypotonic fluids. 
these are three types of crystalloids which are present depending on the concentration of the normal saline like uh, the isotonic fluids they contain about uh, 0.9 percent normal saline and the lactated drinker and plasmylate they are a form of isotonic fluid while saline in 1.8 percent 3 percent 5 percent 7 percent 7.5 percent and 10 percent of concentrations it is hypertonic fluid coming in the category of hypertonic while a same saline nacl when given in 0.45 percent that is lesser than that what you are giving in the isotonic solutions or uh, uh, 0.45 nacl with 2.5 percent of dextrose or distilled water uh, in this uh, combinations if given it is a hypotonic fluids so we have to remember when these are to be used the isotonic ones are used to restore the fluid deficits they correct the electrolyte abnormalities and maintenance of fluid requirements these agents you can see them uh, given in the general weakness also uh, they are uh, given intravenously salines are put on the patients and uh, if uh, there is a you know, lesser intake of food or a person is unable to eat food due to any uh, surgery any procedure is taking place or due to any fatigue weakness so this uh, solutions are given iv and uh, this uh, hypertonic solutions these are used uh, to increase the circulatory volume via movement of intracellular and interstitial water into the intravascular space as we have seen in the previous diagrammatic representation in the previous slides that how they enter into the interstitial uh, fluid and then from there they enter into the plasma so indirectly we can give them uh, to increase the volume uh, uh, in the circulatory uh, system and uh, hypertonic solutions these are used to treat the patient with diseases uh, uh, processes that uh, causes sodium and water retention namely like the congestive heart failure hepatic diseases se severe hypernatremia when we see that there is um, a person is suffering from sodium and water retention so at that point at that point we can give hypotonic fluids to the patient so this crystalloids and colloids when we see uh, they are uh, the colloidals are better better choice as compared to that of crystalloids because colloidals they are larger molecules in size so they easily retain in the intervascular space they increase the osmotic pressure in a larger amount as compared to that of the crystalloids and they are more effective in resuscitation of plasma volume they cause more amount of plasma to get resuscitate, resuscitate into the uh, uh, in, into the vascular space into the intravascular space uh, where it is required to increase the amount of plasma while that uh, while as compared to that of the crystalloids so the duration of action is also longer as that of the crystalloids so they are a better choice and if we compare them uh, in front of each other we can see that uh, if we see the persistence in the intravascular space so colloidal is having good persistence they have prolonged hemodynamic stabilization they have moderate required infusion volume they are insignificant in causing the risk of tissue edema they are good in enhancement of capillary and low to moderate risk of anaphylaxis is there but it can be managed and men, uh, like it is seen in some allergenic factors only if you use uh, gelatin or something like that but not always and um, and if uh, the colloid oncotic pressure is maintained when we are giving this uh, colloidal preparations and but the problem is these are more expensive as compared to that of the crystalloid but these are better choice of treatment and if we see a uh, representation of how they resuscitate the fluids we can see over here very uh, means uh, clear in this diagram it is shown that how when we give crystalloids they cause lesser amount of uh, the agents uh, to retain in the, the plasma uh, the smaller amount of uh, volume is showing its effect and it lasts for only 10 to 20 minutes while when we give gelatin a uh, larger amount of uh, resuscitation of fluids can be seen into the um, vascular space and it effect lasts for one to two hours while if we you now shift towards the albumin you can see that the more now a greater amount of uh, uh, plasma volume can be resuscitated and it lies for about two to four hours while if we see the heta starch maximum amount of it is retained and it lies for about four to twelve hours the effect is lasting so we can see that the heta starch is a better resuscitation fluids as compared to the others 
and uh, crystalloids they are uh, lesser uh, resuscitating fluid as compared to the others so this is just a mere comparison of the resuscitation uh, uh, properties and uh, now we'll see after administration what are the adverse reactions that they can cause we have given a minomics over here that is the fcai triple e this is a minomics to let us remember it more easily f standing for fluid overload c contamination and infection a allergic and anaphylactic reactions i incomplete metabolism and tissue storage first e effects of hemostasis second e effects of renal uh, function and the third e that is effects on cross matching techniques so these are certain uh, adverse reactions of plasma volume expanders that is the fcai triple e fluid overload contamination and infection allergic and anaphylactic reactions incomplete metabolism and tissue storage effects on hemostasis effects on renal function effects on cross matching techniques so keeping these adverse reactions in mind we can use this plasma volume expanders to treat uh, uh, our emergency conditions if uh, burns and shocks are taking place or any circulatory shock or uh, trauma is taking place in a patient so thank you very much uh, to the audiences and I hope to see you soon uh, in our forthcoming videos. So till that time, stay tuned for our further pharmacology studies. Bye.